This tutorial will be the first part of four that are going to cover the use of the Visuals Editor tool. The Visuals Editor tool can be found in the main tool palette at the bottom or at the end of your bar is horizontal. It looks like a little flag icon. And at first when you select it, you'll notice that you won't see anything. That's because people have to be selected in order to edit them. So I'm going to go ahead and select this group of five performers that I've got set up right here. And as soon as I do that, you can see that we have some defaults that come into play. I just set this up. I went ahead and put five performers on the field and I used an X, which is the starting default spot when you put performers on the field. So as you can see, it set them up as tenor saxophone players and the default uniform was the male marcher one and the shako with the plume. And this is what it looks like. You can see it's a maroonish type top with a silver baldric, black pants, black shoes, maroon-ish shako with a black plume. All of that can be changed. Now, one word of warning before we dive deeper into this. The visuals editor tool is not going to be useful to you in writing drill. Writing drill happens here in this window. This is where you're going to plot points. This is where you're going to plot transitions. This is where you're going to figure out step sizes and paces and all that stuff. The visuals editor tool is useful to an extent in order for you to see what the live animation would look like. It's useful to present that to your students and it may be useful to you to see things in a different manner, but it's absolutely not going to really help you plot drill points. So let's get that out of the way. Most drill designers, can go without ever using the visuals editor tool and they will be 100% fine. In fact, I know a couple of drum corps designers that hardly ever, if ever, open up the real view window. Their work is done right here. However, it is kind of cool to look at it and the animation has come such a long way in the last 10 to 15 years that it's a shame not to use the tools that the Pyware folks have provided for us in such good faith. So let's take a look at the first of the tabs which is going to be the Uniform and Equipment tab. As I already said, you can change the uniform at any time, and we're going to do that here. Instead of Male Marcher 1, if we select Male Marcher 2, you can see it's changed the uniform, and Male Marcher 3 will change the uniform again. You can actually edit what those uniforms look like, and I'll show you that at the end of this tutorial, or maybe even make a different tutorial so that this one doesn't get too long. From here, you can also change what instrument they play. I can change these guys to be flute players. Now, if we get very close, you're going to know it looks kind of goofy. That is obviously not correct hand positioning, but we're hardly ever going to be that close to them, so it shouldn't matter too much. You can turn them into any sort of brass player, of course. And some of them look all right, some of them look a little strange. Most of the brass ones look all right, especially the sousaphone. I think that one looks pretty good because of the way that their hands are positioned across the instrument. You can also change them to percussionists, snare drums, tenor drums, bass drums, although they'll be facing us so you won't really get a good, you know, you can kind of see that guy there. And cymbal players, you can actually even make them marching xylophones and I'm not sure who does this anymore but it used to be a thing so I can understand why these guys put it in. You can turn them into guard members, give them a flag instead of any equipment and and you have a lot of choices as you can see you have 16 choices for flags each one will have a different style a different color and you can customize these as well so you could actually take a picture of your actual flag pattern and then go ahead and change it, upload it uh, here, and change some of these default flags. It's not easy, but it can be done. Not only do we have flags, we've also got batons. We've got rifles. And we even have air blades and sabers. So there's a lot of things that you can do here. Let's go back to flag one. And let's actually change the marcher to a female guard member number one. And for whatever reason, a while back, I set them at baseball cap forward, but we're gonna take off the hat and just have no hat. We'll apply our changes there. And you've just gone ahead and created 
uh, a nice uniform style with you know no hat although there are other options there as well you got you could have the guard wearing aussies you could have them wearing shakos you could have them wearing berets let's take a look at what a beret would look like that looks kind of funky can't see it because it's behind the flag so let's let's put the flag at right shoulder so you can see it a little bit better <laughs> yeah i mean not exactly the most flattering thing in the world the beret on the guard members but you can see from far away it looks cool like you're not going to really zoom in to get that level of detail most of the time so when you see this animated from up top i think it makes for a very effective visual impact and especially if you're going to then send the animation off to your clients so that they can show it to their students or if you are writing for your own students I feel like the students really appreciate this level of detail. And you're never going to get that close. And by the way, if you wanted to, you could actually change the faces on the performers. Let's not even get into that. That's pretty difficult, but it's possible if you want to really dig into it. So that's most of the functionality of the first tab here, the uniform and equipment tab. You can also tell them not to use any equipment at all. Let me zoom in close again. So they can just not use any equipment or uh, you could, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all of our choices there. I think we've exhausted all of the guard choices, all of the brass, percussion and woodwind choices. So you can do all that stuff from this screen. And of course, if you want to differentiate, you can select just a few performers to do that. Like I could technically select that one and that one and change just their uniform. And so when we go back to the screen to look at it, you can see that their uniforms are different. So you're able to have a great degree of control over all of your uniform choices and your instrument choices. Now, one quick word about putting your own spin on things. You, you will have to learn how to do this yourself in a way, but what you would do if you wanted to customize the uniforms, you would go under document options you would go to the real view perspective window. And here under, let's say, let's just say mail marcher one. I have a whole bunch of things that I can choose in the fabric folder that's automatic. And you can see that here's our mail band uniforms and here's some of the other things that you've seen in this file. But I can also create my own and I have done that here. And you can actually download some from the Pyware website as well. There's a ton, a plethora of marching band uniform designs for well-known marching bands across the country and drum corps. So if you have a uniform that is close to what one of these famous groups has, then you might just be able to download that. I have actually created custom uniforms for the groups that I write drill for. And uh, it's, it can look a little goofy, but just so that you can see what we have to work with, that's what it looks like when you set it up. It has all the uniform pieces kind of splayed out non-three-dimensionally and it looks horrifying i know especially when you're looking at the face spread out like this but that is so that it'll wrap around a 3d figurine so let's go ahead and select the isu uniform here and then for the shako with plume i'm going to select the isu shako with plume that i have created and we'll hit OK. And I'm going to change the uniform here to Mail Marcher 1 and Shaco with Plume 1. And when I open up the real view window, it should look like the Indiana State University uniform. And there you have it. Again, if you come closer in, you'll notice some things are not exactly correct. For example, you can kind of see that this is not exactly correct. I had to do a little bit of trimming and I, I wasn't paying attention to that much detail. I was trying to work fast. You'll note that there is some artifact of the chain left over from the previous design. And you'll note that this, of course, does not look exactly right. It's because I took a picture and pasted it on top of the existing design. I could probably have spent hours upon hours tweaking it and perfecting it, but what's the point? From far away, it looks pretty decent. You'll also notice that the colors don't match. That does not match that. But that's because that one was from a picture and this one was trying to overall get the right color. But from far away, they look pretty good. And that's really what we're going for. 
So in order to do that, you're going to need a visual editor such as Photoshop. You can use GIMP. You can use Affinity. There's a couple of other free ones, and then there's a whole plethora of paid ones. And what you would do, uh, let's just go to this real quick. You would go to the file. Uh, you would open up the fabric, like for example, with the female band uniform three. I would open this up and then I would change the colors either manually or I would take a picture of an existing uniform and paste it as best as I could on all of the different elements. And I, heck, you could even put in a specific face in here if you want to stare at this for a while. It's truly horrifying, especially if you get closer in. Yes, horrifying. But Doing that allows you to have this 3D look to the performer. It's wrapping the face around and it's, it's not visible. It, it doesn't look quite as creepy when we do it in this, in this manner, right? So that's something that you could mess around with with Photoshop or with any other visual editing program. And maybe I'll dig into that in a future tutorial, but this tab was really just about showing this tutorial was just about showing that first tab, which is the uniform and equipment tab. The next tutorial will deal with the visuals and facing or some kind of combination of the other tabs. Uh, we'll do this, the, the rest of them in four parts.